Well, welcome to another edition of On the Agenda. This is City Manager Bill Osborne, and today my special guest will be Dr. Skip Sullivan, who's president of, of West Georgia Technical College here in Douglasville. Now, some of you may be more acquainted with that uh, school by the former name of West Central Technical College. And in a minute, I'll ask Dr. Sullivan to uh, explain the changeover on, on names, but uh, uh, Dr. Sullivan, we're just glad to have you on the agenda today. Thanks. I'm excited to be here and uh, be part of this program this morning and, and look forward to our conversation today. All right. Well, tell us about the name change. Uh, about a year and a half ago, as the economy began to soften a little bit in the state, uh, our state board look, took a look at our the complexion of the colleges across the state of Georgia and began to, to marry up some institutions. And uh, we were one of the, the colleges that were elected to merge, and we merged with West Georgia Technical College of LaGrange. We were West Central, they were West Georgia, and uh, just geographically it fit us to, to take the name of West Georgia. So right. at that point in time, officially, uh, July 1 of last year, we changed our name to West Georgia Technical College. All right. But with a merger, we came out in pretty good shape with that, didn't we? Absolutely. Uh, and both colleges actually came out in, in good shape. Uh, actually, we are growing at a pace that's uh, just remarkable, and, and we continue to grow as a college. Uh, but we lost no programs. We lost no employees. We, we didn't lose anything uh, in regards to that except our name. So right. uh, we, we came out uh, a good, strong institution. Right. You know, the city of Douglasville has been a, a big supporter of, of the technical college here, technical school in the beginning. Uh, I remember long years ago when I had been city manager for only a short time that the mayor at that time, uh, uh, the uh, Chamber of Commerce, our local legislative delegation, all working to try to, to get a branch campus of, of uh of the uh, technical school, of course, headquartered in Carrollton, to be located here in Douglasville. And uh, we were successful. Uh, and so uh, on the site where it still stands, uh, the uh, school was built. So uh, that was before your time, but sure. I know you know uh, about what went on then. Share a little bit about uh, the, the first few years of uh, the school here. Sure, if I'm not mistaken, and I believe I'm correct, the, the campus that was built in Douglasville was the first branch campus of a technical college in the state of Georgia. Uh, opening in, in October of 1995, first building and uh, in January of 96, uh, the second building opened on that campus and really was designed for about five or six hundred students, really mm -hmm. not knowing what's going to happen in the future. But uh, we're excited to say again as we've added another building and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, we're up at about 16 or 1,700 students and anticipate right. this fall over 2,000 on right. that campus. Right. Well, I remember back in those early days, we actually put some cash money. Uh, the state wanted us to do that, and, and, and we did. And, and in return, they said they'd put a plaque showing that the city of Douglasville uh, uh, had had been a contributor. And uh, so uh, the mayor had asked me, where do we want to put the plaque? And at that time, the building that this was to go into was a conference center, and it was divided into three sections. And I said, well, let's put the plaque beside the door of the middle section, because I figured if, if they, uh, that would be the main door, but if they were doing something and only part of it, we'd have a better chance of people seeing our plaque uh, if it was on the middle door. Now, I know you've put that space to, to different use now, so tell us about that. Uh, certainly, as the, the campus population has grown uh, in Douglas County, and, and we are excited about that growth. We're excited about the number of people we employ, but also about the number of students who are attending there. Uh, that conference center was closed down uh, to, to be a conference center anymore. We, mm -hmm. we really, not part of our mission to be a conference center. Right. Uh, we were overflowing in adult education, so we took one-third of that conference center, converted it to classroom space, and uh, it's used today as adult ed. One-third of that building or that, that portion of that building is used for a bookstore. Uh, we did not have a bookstore here for a long, long time. Now we have a full-service bookstore, mm -hmm. so students don't have to go anywhere. They can mm -hmm. just stay right there on the campus to buy their books and other items. The center section, which still is entitled the City of Douglasville Room, uh, is the center section. It's uh, a multifunction uh, room at this point in time. Uh, we do have plans to convert that to a, a larger library space for our college. Uh, we've run out of room in our library, and we're going to. Uh, we've got some drawings to to bring a put a mezzanine in there and do some very creative things in that center section in that 
city of Douglasville room to make that a, a state-of-the-art new library. That's great. As long as we got the, the plaque there, we'll be happy with using it for however you deem best. Good, uh, good. Uh, I know that uh, West Georgia Technical College is a member of the Technical College system of Georgia, and I know that that your service area has, has grown, as, as you mentioned a minute ago. Uh, tell us a little bit more about what you consider your service area at this time. Sure. The technical colleges uh, have a, uh, a delivery service area. Uh, before the merger, we were Douglas, Carroll, Harrelson, and Coweta County. Uh, with the merger of West Georgia Technical College and the ultimate name change, we've become a college of seven counties. So now we've added Troop Herd in Meriwether counties uh, to that list, giving us seven uh, counties that we serve and a population of about a half a million people in those seven counties. Right. And as you look at, at uh, the current geographic area uh, and you look at uh, uh, what you're doing on a continuing basis, uh, for our viewers, just give us a thumbnail sketch of what you consider to be the mission of uh, West Georgia Technical College. The primary mission of the Technical College System of Georgia, and as evidenced by our own mission at the college, is workforce development, workforce development, workforce development. We happen to think that all education, liberal arts or otherwise, is workforce development and preparing people for the workforce. Uh, there are three prongs to our mission, however, as a, as a college and in, in, in an effort to support workforce development. First is a technical education. It's those components that you usually think of when you think of a college or a technical college. And uh, we have a school of business, we have a school of arts and sciences, we have a school of allied health, and we have a school of trade and tech. So the, po the programs that are housed in those different schools represent technical education. We also do adult education. The adult education component at the college uh, is training for the GED test, it is adult basic education and English as second language. Uh, There's so many thousands and thousands and thousands uh, of residents in our counties who do not have a high school diploma or GED. Many do not speak English and many do not even know how to read and write. Mm -hmm. So that component of our college works in that area and that's part of our mission. And the third piece of our mission is economic development. We have a vice president of economic development and a division that just works with the different counties the chambers, the counties, the development authorities, uh, the K-12 systems, and helping companies as they uh, tend to want to relocate in our service area. So those three pieces are make up our mission, all related to workforce development. Right. And when I was looking at your website recently, I uh, saw that you've got more than 130 approved uh, programs of uh, study to meet the needs that you were just talking right. about. And uh, uh, what are some of the uh, most uh, popular programs, or maybe I shouldn't say popular programs, the most sought out uh, programs? Uh, and, and as you do that, is with your identification a minute ago, I know that there are certificates, diplomas, uh, and degree offerings. And maybe just give us an example sure. of what each of those would be. Probably the most, uh, the programs that are most in demand are healthcare. Uh, folks kind of take a look as they're coming back to school, either uh, to retool uh, themselves, to, to start a new career, to rediscover themselves or whatever they, they find or they, uh, they sense that healthcare is going to be around for a long time. Mm -hmm. Those jobs tend to be here. Uh, they're, they're relatively good paying jobs. So there's a lot of competition to get in those healthcare programs. And as such, we have a lot of folks that are focused in taking those core requirements to get them in oftentimes to what are competitive mm -hmm. programs at the college. But we do three levels of education. The certificate programs tend to be the short-term uh, programs that, that might be one quarter or two quarters long, uh, but a real short time frame to get you from point A to point B to be either employable or to be employed a little better than you are at this point mm -hmm. in time. The diplomas tend to be about a year-long program, a, a little more extensive. Oftentimes it is a number of certificates that are married together and they're embedded in the diploma program to provide the skill sets for individuals that would be just above that that entry level. Mm -hmm. uh, we also do associate degrees. Uh, our uh, associates uh, degrees are designed either be a, to be a terminal degree and, and they are on occasion but also to provide some transferability of students to go on to higher education and uh, we, we find that we, with our numer numerous articulations that that's uh, very beneficial for some of our students. 
Again, certificates are short, diplomas about a year, associate degrees tend to be about two years long, and uh, uh, those are only the, the, the three credentials that we offer to college. Right. And of the individuals who would be participating in any of these programs, uh, what's the general uh, demographics that you would have in terms of your student body, such as age and uh, what prior educational attainment they may have or you know, what their goals may be? First, we are we were, are what's called an open access institution. It doesn't matter anywhere from 16 to 95 if you want to go to school, we have something for you. Mm -hmm. Continuing ed classes or, or otherwise, uh, there's an entry exam. It is not whether or not you can go to school. It just is a placement exam to tell us how good you are in math and reading and some of those things to help us to determine whether or not you can be successful in some of the programs. We have those courses available to get you up to that standard, so it's just a placement and everyone has to, to take that uh, exam to, to begin their process at the college or their right. career at the college. However, what we're seeing, and it's an interesting dynamic, is our student body is getting younger and younger. Uh, used to, technical ed was thought of as you know some of the adults going back to school, mm -hmm. but uh, with dual enrollment and, and with students selecting the technical college right out of high school, we find that, that that average age is dropping, and actually in the last three or four years has dropped about two years on the average. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're getting everything from 16-year-olds to, to 75, 80-year-old students, and uh, it's, it's, it makes for a wonderful classroom when you have that mix of students in the class. Right. Now, if some of our viewers have an interest in, in getting more information on uh, uh, West Georgia Technical College, uh, perhaps even becoming an enrollee, uh, what would they need to do? Well, certainly we would encourage anyone who has any interest to check out what opportunities we have. We have a website, www.westgatech.edu. Dot edu. It defines all of our programs, the admissions process, all of that. There's a telephone number there. Pick up the phone, call us as well. But we strongly encourage you just to drop by one of our campuses. And we have five. But drop by one of our campuses, go on the campus, take a look at what's there, speak to an admissions counselor, and, and let them go through the process of what uh, we have on that particular campus and what yeah, help them determine uh, you know, where you're, you may be best suited and what may interest you and kind of direct you in, in the way. But we want you to visit our campus. We think it's important for folks to see what they have in their own community. All right. Very good. Uh, let's talk for a few minutes concerning a subject that you mentioned uh, a moment ago where you said the focus of uh, looking at workforce development, workforce development. And, of course, uh, I know that the state with its quick start program where they talk about if we've got – a new industry coming to Georgia that have, that can work, and I think that's almost always with the technical schools of, of preparing a workforce to meet the, the needs of a new industry, a, a new business. Uh, and I know that around the state, local development authorities, uh, chambers of commerce, and, and anybody that's involved in, in how do we go about trying to keep our population here by the jobs we bring, but they need to be able to, to handle those jobs. And I know that uh, that's part of, of what uh, you're all about. And, of course, from the city standpoint, about a year and a half ago, we reactivated our city development authority that had been dormant for a long time. Uh, a seven-member board was appointed back in July of 2008. In fact, I had the, the pleasure of serving as the interim executive director until uh, we employed Jamie Gilbert to be our executive director, and, and I know he's working on some some uh, projects that uh, will lead him uh, to sitting down to talk with you about needs of some businesses, industries that are coming. I know the same thing has been true for some time for the Development Authority of Douglas mm -hmm. County, but uh, give us a, just a quick capsule again of, of how it works uh, with, uh, say, a Development Authority and the Technical School and people who want to be employed by the new business but don't have the skill sets. Sure. Uh, there's a number of pieces. Quick Start that uh, you may or may not know a whole lot about is part of our technical college system of Georgia. It's part of our agency. Uh, we we co-administer those programs within our service district. We have about 14 or 15 of those projects ongoing right now where the state of Georgia will come in and at no charge will help a company by training their employees. Uh, not only a new company, but a company that may be expanding 
uh, adding a new product line or something like that. If they meet the criteria, they can have the training for free. In other words, uh, for instance, with Kia, uh, when they, they started down in West Point, the employees had already been through the quick start process. They knew how to run the robotics and the welders and, and all of those components. So when they opened, they were productive day one. Very attractive piece to, to what's offered in this state. Our, our um, philosophy at the college also is to be uh, as tied with the development authorities as we possibly can. So uh, we're also on the scene to do training. In addition to the free service that Quick Start may offer, uh, we do the training uh, either on site or on our campuses to meet the needs, the workforce needs of those companies that are, are coming into the area mm -hmm. and have those expanded needs. Uh, we have a vice president of economic development, Pete Snell, who works. Actually, I just met Jamie outside, and we had some conversations about prospects coming, and uh, the college works intimately with these groups and right. in, in helping to recruit. The more business and industry that are here, the better off our college is, and, right. and certainly that's part of our role and our mission. That's great. I appreciate that sure. information. Uh, now, Dr. Skip Sullivan, uh, tell me about Skip. Where did that come from? Well, I... I, I I can't believe you asked that, Bill. Very frankly, Nick, Skip is a nickname that I was given at birth. It has nothing to do with my given name, and uh, I have one of those names that you've never heard of as a first name, except my dad, and you didn't know my dad. So uh, um, mom didn't want to saddle me with that the rest of my life, so at birth started calling me Skip, and actually it was Skipper when I was growing up, and it shortened to Skip as I've gotten a little older. but. Uh, no, that's that's something I've had all my life. Okay, you know, if uh, being Bill, most Bills are William. Or, uh, if you, somebody named Thomas, they may be called Tom. But you know, with a name like Skip, I just couldn't make a connection. I figured, well, we just need to go straight to the horse's mouth to to get the uh, Skip is actually uh, a shortened version of Irby. Okay, <laughs> well, I'll let that pass. <laughs> let our viewers figure out that out. Uh, Skip, give us a little brief personal history, uh, where you were born, where you attended school, sure. uh, how you happened to come to Douglasville. Well, first, I'm, I'm not a career educator, and it's probably evident by a lot of things that I, I do or say that I'm not a career educator. Uh, make no bones about that. But uh, I grew up in, in L.A., lower Alabama, uh, moved over when Brooklyn Air Force Base closed a number of years ago to New Orleans, and uh, then grew up in New Orleans uh, area. So... My background is uh, very southern and uh, began to work uh, in high school in the trucking industry and for 20 years. I uh, worked in the trucking business. I drove for a little while and then got into management, but worked my way through school. I uh, got a, a bachelor's degree, uh, ultimately started in Mobile, Alabama, finished up in Chattanooga, Tennessee, but stayed in the trucking business moving around for a number of years and uh, in the early 90s decided to go back to school and I went back to school as a minority scholar at West, I mean at Fort Valley State University, and then uh, got a job with the technical college system. Went into the doctorate program uh, at the University of Georgia in Athens. So finished my career, uh, uh, educational career, or just started my educational career with a doctorate there. Uh, education is lifelong. Uh, we continue to have to learn and and do those things to stay current. But uh, my formal education career took me. Uh, all the way to the University of Georgia in Athens, and all those experiences have been good. Uh, I moved down here from Battle Creek, Michigan, working at Kellogg Community College, and first at the college, then on a, a, another project to start a four-year uh, college, a private college that was started up there called Miller College. Uh, but I was excited to move back south where we don't shovel snow, except we've been shoveling a little snow this year. Uh, so I'm happy to be back in the south, back where I feel comfortable, back where my roots, but my background in education is business and industry, and it certainly relates well, being our mission, being workforce development, having been in that environment and, and worked there right. for many, many years. Very good. You know, the first time I heard you make a speech, I thought uh, somewhere in your background, you had to have worked in radio or television, and uh, you didn't mention anything about that. Uh, so is that something you've done in the past, or is that part of your future? No, I, I've done some some radio and TV, mostly in athletics and sports, uh, right. college sports. I, I enjoy announcing basketball games and football games and things of that nature. In fact, uh, Friday night, I do Friday night football on sideline, uh, okay. even now, just to volunteer and uh, just to be part of our community. But I enjoy it. I enjoy uh, 
uh, not getting in front of a, a camera necessarily, but uh, I like getting uh, getting out there and participating, and, and I get excited about sports, so that's one of the fun right. areas that you can, can do. Well, very good. Well, I knew there had to be something that you had done in, in radio and television because of the way uh, that uh, uh, you handle yourself in front of a camera. and, and, and I always want to do mic. Ringling Brothers, Barn and, and Bailey. I want to be the ring announcer. <laughs> Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Well, you see, know, that's, that's something that some may, point in time, that may we, uh, uh, be in your future. But uh, one of the things that uh, is in your recent past was with the Chamber of Commerce, that uh, you had served as chairman of the board, uh, did a great job with Thank that. Uh, uh, but uh, your tenure in that position was a little different than, than happens most of the time. Tell us about that, and tell us about why you thought it was important uh, for somebody at, at the college to get involved with the Chamber of Commerce? First, I will say that all of our the chambers that we deal with, we have an employee from the college that serves on the board of all the chambers. So at this point, seven different chambers, we have uh, college uh, staff that are involved there. It's important for us to stay close to our communities, understanding what our community needs are, so we can respond in, in the way that our community needs us to be. Uh, we're, we're very intimate in, in what goes on and very centrally focused on what's going on in a particular community. Being spread out with as many campuses and as many counties, we have to do that in order not to forget something or somebody or, or lose focus on, on what's our root, what our roots are, and that is really to be a community-focused school. So, uh, yes, we're, we're involved in, in the chambers, but this one, Michael Poor uh, with Wellstar uh, was the, the board chairman and uh, he could not finish out his term. He he got another job up in North right. Carolina and left, and he pulled me to the side. Actually, it was on the day that we were having our golf outing and said, Skip, I need you to do this. I was a new board member here at Douglas uh, at the Douglas Chamber here, and, uh, of course, I, I said, listen, yeah, we'll, I'll help. And it was just, a f just right after that that uh, Nancy Davis with Georgia Power announced that she was being transferred. She was the chair-elect, so I had the... A wonderful opportunity and, and what a wonderful staff at the chamber, uh, Callie and, and all of our staff to work with. I filled out the remaining term of Michael Poor, then Nancy uh, Davis's uh, uh, term as well. She was at our, our recent chamber dinner, got right. to, to see her and catch up with her some, but uh, I was delighted to serve uh, as the chamber chair and, and will continue to be very actively involved in this chamber. Love the people here, love the community, and uh, it's a real part of my life at this point. That's great. Well, I you did a great job uh, as chairman of the board of the chamber, and I know you will be an asset to them in, in the future. Thanks. Well, going back to uh, the, the college, of course, uh, here in Douglasville, Douglas County, uh, we're home of a very unique uh, and very special educational facility, I think, and that's the College and Career uh, Institute. I know uh, Mayor Thompson, uh, not too long ago, uh, had on his Ask the Mayor program on City TV, uh, Julian Carter, uh, who heads up the uh, career and uh, College and Career Institute, CCI, uh, it being a collaborative uh, venture of, of both the Technical College, Chamber of Commerce, and the Douglas County uh, uh, Board of Education. Right. Uh, tell us a little bit about CCI. First, um, CCI is a charter school. Uh, they're afforded some opportunities as a charter school to do things a little bit differently, to educate a little bit differently. But the, the Career Academy that uh, has been a common model out there, basically it grew from the CEC in Noonan. But the model is that students, uh, while they're in high school, while they're 16 years old, can become college students and use that college credit for high school graduation. So what has been formed here is through this Charter Academy, Career Academy that, that's been started, what we call the College and Career Institute, is an opportunity for students to, to take programs at the college and get college credit. They come part of their day in school. They may be the first part of the day they come out to the school. Either they're, they're bussed over or they drive over. Uh, they go to school and they finish their, their day at their own school or they may start the day at their regular school and, and finish up at the, the CCI in the afternoon. But the concept is this, one, uh, mostly focused on occupational programs, certificate programs, giving them a skill and a credential that when they finish high school, they are employable. They can go to work. In fact, what happens is before they graduate from high school, they get a college credential. It is one of these certificates that we talked about a little mm -hmm. earlier 
they get that handed to them, and that is their uh, pass, if you will, to get a better job, right. even before they graduate from high school. So we think that component of them being able to use that credit toward graduation, because we know many students, when they get a certain age, they kind of fall out a little bit. They get disinterested, or they're not motivated to stay in, and graduation rates in Georgia is certainly one of the things that our state needs to continue to focus on. But what we found in car charter career academies, such as the CCI, if they get into a program, they get engaged, they persist till graduation. At about 95 to 97 percent of students who attend there get involved, they graduate from high school. So it raises that bar, mm -hmm. raises that standard a bit uh, in our local school systems. Right. Besides, they're in a college class with college faculty teaching college curriculum, and they're learning those skills, again, that's out there in the workplace that they need to be successful. So uh, partnering with the, the chamber and, and the K-12 system here, Douglas County School System has been uh, so very, very accommodating and helpful in, in helping to make this transition happen. But we're excited to have that on our campus. Our students come there. They become college students. We want them to identify that they are part of the college. They get right. a college ID. All of those things. So uh, we're excited about that project. Mandy Johnson uh, has been uh, working with us for a long, long time on this project and has made it successful to this point. And we look for only bigger and greater things there down at the, the That's building. great. And I do think this is something very special to have in our community and to all of those people who've been involved uh, in this. Uh, uh, I really applaud and I, I think it's a great benefit to our community. And, you know, if you look at some of the other things we talked about early in this program, if you look at the mission statement of CCI, it certainly underscores that, said in ensuring a viable 21st century workforce. Uh, but uh, if somebody wants to check out uh, College and Career Institute, what do they need to do? It's, it would be no different than if they're checking out the college. They can go to our website at uh, westgeorgiatech.edu. They can visit the campus, talk to an admissions counselor. They can go down to the uh, to Building D, which is where the CCI is located. Mm -hmm. uh, they can talk to, to Mandy. They can talk to uh, Andre, a number of folks there. Uh, we have a high school coordinator right there on that campus that, that can help facilitate some of those discussions, as well as Mandy and her staff. They can give a call. Just give us a call. But they can even work through their high school counselor to get information about. There's oftentimes tours at, at that facility. But if you haven't had the chance, and I would encourage uh, uh, our community folks to take a look, go out there, get a visit, go through some of the programs, very, very class building, state-of-the-art technology in that facility. Very good. Let's conclude today just by uh, giving you the last word on, on uh, uh, how important uh, you believe uh, West Georgia Technical College is to the community and vice versa. Okay. Uh, certainly. The infrastructure that has been built in, in, in Douglasville and Douglas County is very substantial from the college's perspective. Uh, we have facilities that uh, are very, uh, very nice. They're very large. We have some capacity. Uh, we employ probably 75 to 100 full-time employees and, and a lot of part-time employees. Just the, the economic impact of our institution being in the community, I think, is very significant. But it's what we can do for our students who are, are looking for the next step. What can I do? Uh, you know, can they get a fresh start? Yes, they can get a fresh start. The economy has folks really struggling today. But the role of being an open access institution, anybody who wants to go to school can go to school. With the HOPE scholarship and HOPE grant money, most folks can go pretty much tuition free. They might have to buy a book here or there, but for the most part, it's free. So it's it opens up opportunities for students who want a career in a particular field, who want to get some credits and move on and transfer somewhere else. It provides opportunities for the students in our local communities to, to improve themselves. And we want to make sure that we're always there welcoming students, welcoming our community, welcoming business and industry as they look to embrace Douglasville and Douglas County to say, hey, this is where we want to locate, this is where we want to stay, so that we can help make that happen. So we feel that we're an important part of the community and want to stay a true good partner uh, with both the city and the county and the business and industry that we're located. Great. Dr. Skip Sullivan, good to have had you here today on the agenda. To our viewers, thank you for joining us, and next time join us for another edition of On the Agenda.